Hello everyone. My name is MD Raisulisnam Ivan, software engineer at Fscode. I am one of the developer of QDB team. As you all know, today in this session, I am going to talk about Memcached Ops request day to life cycle management for Memcached using QDB. <laughs> so, uh, in table of contents, uh, we'll discuss about that first we are going to talk about memcached uh, like what is memcached why people use memcached and what does it offer then we'll jump into kubedb manage memcached we'll discuss why you should use kubedb manage memcached and what does kubedb does to your memcached database and others and then we have uh, provision memcached using kubedb here we will discuss how memcached is provisioned in kubedb uh, then we will introduce memcached ops request what is memcached ops request and how you can use it and the basic workflow of the memcached ops request uh, after that we will go into the live demo session where i am going to demonstrate how to use memcached ops request to perform certain operations and on your memcached database in kubedb native way Finally, we have a question and answer session where you can ask me uh, regarding this, the whole stuff. Okay, uh, let's know about the Memcast. Uh, here, Memcast is an open source distributed caching, caching system. It allows multiple servers to work together to store in-memory data. Uh, it is used uh, to speed up dynamic web application by reducing Memcast uh, database load. By caching recently accessed data in memory, Memcached reduces the need of repeated database queries, significantly speeding up web applications and reducing database workload. It is uh, highly efficient and scalable in-memory key value store. It uses uh, an in-memory key value store, allowing data to be retrieved and stored quickly. Uh, it enables fast data retrieval by caching recently accessed data. Memcached stores recently accessed data in memory, enable near instant retrieval and reducing the time spent uh, fetching data from primary data source. Uh, it has a low latency and high throughput system, which is ideal for the real time applications. It improves application performance by reducing database load and deliver the fast retrieval. <coughs> Uh, okay, here is our QDB offers for Memcast. Um, if you want to run Memcast database on your Kubernetes, on your public or pri uh, private cloud, you have to do a lot of things like configuration, authentication, and uh, etc. But QDB can simplify the provisioning of the database on Kubernetes. QDB can do all the requiring steps for you automatically and save your huge time. You can need to apply database resource with the necessary configuration. Uh, it will also set the security context where you can do all the stuffs as a non-root user. Um, it will uh, continuously check the health of the Memcached database within a specific time period. It has secure authentication to the Memcached database using Kubernetes secret. It provides uh, uh, custom configuration. Using this feature, you can start Memcached database using the provided configuration. Uh, it is supported multiple versions of Memcached like uh, 1.5.22, 1.6.22 and 1.6.29. Uh, it supports uh, multiple deletion policy like do not terminate, delete, and wipe out. It supports monitoring uh, for Memcached database using Prometheus and Grafana. It has multiple ops requests like version update, reconfiguration, vertical scaling, and horizontal scaling. Uh, okay, next uh, we'll see provision Memcached using QDB. Uh, let's have a look uh, how we provision Memcached using kubedb. Uh, when we install the kubedb operator, uh, Memcached CRD is installed along with the operator. kubedb operator watches the Memcached CRD. So when user uh, create, delete, or update Memcached custom resource, Memcached operator will create the Memcached database. To create and manage Memcached database, you need a set of Kubernetes components. Uh, QDB operator will uh, create each one of them. QDB will create service account, pet sets, services, role, role binding, uh, secrets, app binding, and PDB. Um, 
here uh, using the service you can connect to the memcached uh, using services uh, and uh, uh, for rollback access control uh, it is for necessary permission like cluster role or cluster role binding uh, in pet set it will run the actual database in pdb uh, port disruption budget so that deletion or migration of the instances have a synchronized manner or the manner you have declared in app binding uh, necessary information to connect uh, with the memcached instance it is mainly used by others app like kubestash uh, if you enable monitoring uh, it will also create the service monitor uh, and here's come the deletion policy here is uh, currently three deletion policy uh, they are do not terminate delete and wipe out if you use deletion policy do not terminate and goes to the delete uh, the database it will uh, reject the deletion if you use uh, deletion policy delete it will delete the database but not all its resources like secrets if you use deletion policy wipe out it will delete all the resources it created and there will be no trace of the database resources uh, now we'll see the memcast ops request how it is works and uh, at first uh, uh, we have to create memcached custom resource and then we have QDB operator, which will watch the memcached CR. And when operator finds the memcached custom resource, it creates required number of pet sets and ports and other things like secret services, etc. Uh, then <clears throat> in order to update the memcached database, the user creates memcached ops request with the desired upgradation stuffs. Here you can see the memcached ops request. Uh, it will also refer the memcached CR. And uh, in QDB ops, ops manager operator always watches the memcached ops request CR. When it finds memcached ops request CR, it holds the database object uh, which is referred from the memcached ops request. Uh, so the QDB provisioner operator does not perform any operation in the memcached object during the updating process. By looking at the target memcached ops request CR, uh, QDB ops manager operator updates the memcached of all pet sets. After successfully updating the pet set uh, of their ports and QDB operator ops manager operator updates the memcached object to reflect the update uh, state of the database. Uh, after successfully updating memcached object, the QDB ops manager operator resumes the memcached ops object so that QDB provisioner operator can resume its usual operation. Uh, this is how our memcached ops request to work. Uh, then you can see the installation process here. To install kubedb on your Kubernetes cluster, you can use the Helm command. You But you need license to install it. Uh, you can visit the kubedb.com uh, to check the license. Uh, okay, uh, so here is our live demo session. In the live demo, I will create memcached uh, CR and we'll show how to use memcached ops request. Okay, let's start. And so here you can see uh, we have already two secret applied. Uh, one is for authentication of secret and one is for uh, memcached configuration. And now we are going to create the memcached CR. CTL. Uh, we have created the memcast uh, and you can see uh, the <clears throat> memcast.com, kubedb.com, memcast.d uh, quick start already provisioning and our two pod is running and the necessary steps like uh, secrets, memcd, quick start config and pet set and the other two services already running. And you can see our uh, DB is already ready. <clears throat> uh, we, can, uh, we can also read or write uh, from the memcast database like uh, we can connect to a port like kubectl port forward. We can port forward uh, to 11211 port. Uh, port is forwarding. Then we can connect to the port using telnet. <clears throat> uh, so uh, if we're going to uh, check the version, it will uh, say us that uh, unauthenticated error because first we have to authentication. Uh, so le let's authenticate. First set, then key then flag zero and then ttl zero and the length of the username and password currently the username and password is who and bar uh, 
uh, then uh, we 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 got message stored so uh, authentication successfully if we check the version now uh, then we can get the version our current running version is 1.6.22 uh, if we check the dvml uh, then we can get give ctl get demo ml and if we grow from the first in the first section, there is our object meta and type meta. We'll, uh, <clears throat> as usual, other Kubernetes object. Here we can uh, speak about the spec section. Uh, first, here is config secret. Uh, we, we already we have uh, created the secret MC configuration. Here we can see, and our deletion policy is wipe out. And we have also pod template. Then you can also see container whose name is memcast. And we have also declared re limits. Where memory is one gigabyte and resources, higher CPUs uh, 500 millicore and memory also uh, again <clears throat> request is also one gigabyte. You know, here is security context and finally we have also two replicas. You can see uh, two replicas running and the version is 1.6.22. Okay, uh, now we'll go to the ops request uh, here. Uh, first, we will see the update version. Uh, we will see uh, all the ops request one by one. First, we will go to update version. Here, you can see the DVML. Uh, here, we used version 1.6.22, but we want to update it to 1.6.29. And then we will see the reconfigure. Uh, after that, we will see vertical scaling and then horizontal scaling. Uh, okay, uh, gets back. Uh, firstly, we already checked that our running uh, memcached version is 1.6.22. We can also check it from the DVML. Here is the version is 1.6.22. Uh, okay. Uh, we will first we will see the version update YAML. Uh, here you can see the object meta, type meta, and in spec section. The ops request type is vertical scaling. And uh, database reference is most important here. Uh, the name of the DB must be same as our running DB. You can see it is same. And uh, uh, oh, sorry, we will uh, uh, we'll deploy the uh, version update. Uh, sorry for that. We'll go version update. <coughs> okay. Uh, here you can see the ops request name is update version and database reference is memcast quick start. And the, our targeted version is 1.6.29, but currently running version is 1.6.22. Okay, we will now apply the EML. We'll apply version update. Okay, we already created, and you can see the, our ops request is in progressing stage, and uh, our pod will restart recently. Uh, Yes, you can see on one pod already restarted. Second one is terminating and it also running. And you can see DB ready and our <coughs> ops request is, status is successful. Uh, now we can recheck the DBML. QCTL. Get MMKCML. Here you can see our version upgraded to 1.6.29. You can also check it from here. Mm, connecting to the telnet and then we have to set the authentication set e then flag then value and the <clears throat> length of the username and password username foo and password var and the version command okay our db is updated it is 1.6.29 here it is also showing 1.6.29 uh, then we will go for uh, of request uh, reconfiguration okay let's check it first reconfiguration uh, here you can see that um, our uh, of request type is reconfigure then database reference is memcd quick start and uh, we are using here apply config here is also second method we can also use secret for that but we are uh, currently using apply config here in mem memcache configuration fi file we are directly changing it uh, then uh, we can uh, first we have a, there is <coughs> we are changing uh, connection limit so let's check the connection limit first uh, 
uh, here you can see our currently running memcast uh, connection is 555 uh, but we are going to change this to 3000 okay let's apply the yaml Okay, our reconfiguration yeah, of Sribest is running, it is in progressing state. Uh, quickly, our data, our pod will be terminated and restart. Uh, and DB was in critical state. Uh, it will go, uh, yes, it is currently in critical and now it is ready. Uh, two pod is also running and reconfiguration status is also successful. So, we can recheck it uh, again, connecting to the uh, one of the port of the memcast um, using telnet uh, every time we have to authenticate so it is important as similar we have told the length is 7 and 4 and bar then if we check the states of the memcast then finally we will check the connection here you can see the max connection 3000 so that's our reconfiguration works and uh, then we will go for the memcast um, stops request uh, vertical scaling okay uh, before applying vertical scaling we will uh, check the currently resource okay if ctl get db uh, we are seeing the db here we can uh, already check the resources it is currently uh, one gigabyte uh, memory and uh, request also one gigabyte and cpu is 500 millicore and we are going to change it okay let's uh, check the vertical scaling yaml uh, in vertical scaling yaml uh, here you can see the in spec section uh, uh, off request type is vertical scaling data, data reference is uh, memcached quick start and vertical scaling field uh, memcast uh, resources and then request uh, is memory 11,000 uh, 1100 um, megabyte and then CPU is 600 uh, millicore and uh, limits are also same. Okay, uh, let's apply this. Keep uh, CTL apply then vertical scaling YAML. Uh, oh, sorry for that. It will be apply. <coughs> okay, uh, it is applying and it is in progressing state. Let's wait for something. Our pod will be restart and uh, it will ready again. Wait for that. One pod already restarted. Second pod is also restarting. And DB ready and our vertical scaling of request types status is also successful. Uh, let's check it. Give CTL get memcast. Uh, we'll check the again DBML. And now in the container section, you can see that it has already changed. Our CPU is 600, memory is 1100, and uh, for it is for limit and for request, it is also same. Uh, that's how you can use the vertical scaling. Uh, and uh, after that, finally, we will move into the uh, horizontal scaling. First, we will apply the horizontal scaling up. Uh, you can use scale up or scale down. First, we will check the YAML. Uh, in YAML, you can see the off request type is horizontal scaling database reference is same as the DV name horizontal scaling and the replicas is five currently we have uh, two replicas you can check it using uh, the DVML UCTL. here you can see the replicas now currently running replicas are two here you can see the two running replicas and <clears throat> we'll now we will apply the horizontal scaling up command CTL apply then horizontal scaling up uh, we have applied 
and you can check it, it is pending and it will create three more pots here uh, one by one you can see the third one it is running then it is creating fourth one and uh, now it is will the fifth fifth word uh, it is all again in pending but it will successful and the db is also registered here you can see the five port and uh, using the dbml uh, you can also make sure uh, that uh, the five port are running so you will get you can uh, you can see that uh, the current number of replicas are five uh, you can also uh, scale down like uh, if we check the eml <clears throat> uh, here you can see the same as of request uh, uh, horizontal scaling up uh, the type is also horizontal scaling database reference is also same here horizontal scaling replicas are two currently there is five uh, so the uh, last three port will be uh, terminate so okay let's apply the eml <clears throat> CTL apply horizontal scaling down. Okay, we have applied this. It is in pending state and it will terminate one by one. Not all the all of them in one instance. So let's wait. One already terminate. Fourth one is terminating. And for third one, DB. Uh, goes for critical state when it is successful it again comes to ready and the uh, our off request is successful uh, here you can see the two running port we can also verify it from the uh, dbml so it will get here you can see the replicas uh, currently uh, running replicas are two uh, that's how you can scale up and scale down uh, okay uh, that's all our live demo session and we can get back to the, our slide. Uh, uh, now I will talk about the future plan. We are going to add TLS support and we are planning to make deletion policy more flexible. Currently we have three deletion policy and one more deletion policy is going to be added. Uh, we are trying to improve the Memcast client uh, like we have already added uh, auth support in our client also planning to add new feature in the memcast we are also planning to extend the monitoring support planning to use uh, it is uh, uh, we are planning because uh, we need uh, more easier monitoring uh, that's all about our <clears throat> future plans then uh, so that's all from my side if you have any question regarding this webinar you can ask me Uh, okay, I think no question right now. Uh, thanks for joining.